In Portland, we are very fortunate to have a number of tool libraries throughout the city. If I don't own a tool, I can just check it out like a book. There are quite a few of them around the country and throughout the world. Google it, there may be one near you. Okay, thanks. I've only cut rafters like once or twice, I guess. Started out trying to use the speed square uh, using these arcane marks and my rafters didn't come out very well. Then I came up with that, my own method. Later found out that a lot of people who are not you know, professional carpenters would do the same thing. I lined my first joist up on the top plates and marked plumb lines by extending a straight edge up from the wall stud below. Then I measured the gap here between the top plate and the rafter, about an inch and a quarter, and placed a mark at this distance from the bottom edge of the other plumb line. Then I drew a line between that mark and the bottom edge of the other plumb line, and I was ready to cut a bird's mouth. It wasn't perfect, but it was good enough, especially since I would be using hurricane straps. Next I marked plumb lines at the end of the boards and cut them to final length. After I finished the first rafter, I used it as a template for each of the rest of them. This went pretty quick. I used hurricane straps to secure the rafters. They are galvanized steel brackets that can prevent the roof from getting ripped off in high winds. I don't anticipate this problem in the Pacific Northwest, but they're cheap and they're a fast, easy, and extremely secure way to attach a roof. This style of hurricane strap only sticks out on one side, so I used it on the end rafters. I forgot to include the fascia boards in my lumber order, so luckily the 16 footers fit just fine on the roof of my car. After struggling a little bit with placement of the front fascia board, luckily Lizzie was around to help me place the back one. I'm using a piece of lumber here as a straight edge to set the height of the fascia board. Now it may look a little low, but you want the outer top edge of the fascia board to be in the same plane as the rafter. Next I built the gable wall overhang. The type of construction I chose is called a ladder because that's what it looks like. I attached a cleat to the lower fascia board to hold that end of the assembly up while I raised the other end. Here's a little bit better view. Here's a, I just put up a cleat here to kind of create a lip for when I put that ladder up so uh, I can rest it on there and hoist it up in place and nail it to the side right up there. Oh, 
Okay. Nice. And that's all she wrote. In addition to nailing this ladder overhang on really well, I also came in later with structural screws to really tighten it on there securely. So I just decided to leave this fascia board long when I put it up. It should be easy enough to uh, just cut these down to proper length now that they're up here. So that is what I'm going to do right now. You want to set your blade just deep enough to make the cut so you don't cut into any of the uh, board behind it. And that's it for roof framing. Thanks a lot for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe for more.